Hi, I'm Ariel Silver, and this video is L'Eloi Nishma, Sarah Rivka, Baharav, Nachum Umindel, Sarah Lamb Drach. Um, I'm going to be talking about Mizmor Nunchet, Psalms 58. So this Mizmor is the third, is the second in the group of three Tehillim, which all begin with the title of L'Amatzeach Al Tishachet L'David Mechtam. So um, all these Psalms that are bridged together by this title, um, have to do, uh, so they talk about evil people and um, Rishayim and enemies that we're asking God to, to protect us from. So the origin of this title, Lam Natsech Al Tishachet, is not so clear where it comes from. It can either be referring to a song of that time period in which we're, it indicates us, the readers, what tune the Mizmor should be sung in, or it could be referring to the Pasuk in Dvarim, where Moshe is telling B'nai Israel about his time period on the Har Sinai for 40 days in which he was davening for them after Chet HaEgel, and he says, Be'etpalel el Hashem al tishachet amcha, and I daven to God, don't destroy your people, which is appropriate for these three verses in which we're also asking God for protection to be saved. Um, so in Pasuk Bet, it begins, Hamnam elam tzedek tidaberun. Is it true that you're righteous? You are righteous speaking people. Misharim tishpatu bnei adam. Is it with straightness you judge people? The, the composer here is asking a rhetorical question. No, like obviously you're not, you're not righteous people. You don't judge people with yosher. Af belev olok tifalun. You plot in your heart to do wickedness. Ba'aretz chamas yidechem tifalsun. You commit chamas through your measurements. So here in these two psukim, we can see an indication of who the evil people we are talking about, that it talked about um, Tishbetu, that they were judging people, and also Tifasun, that they were using measurements. So maybe this is referring to judges or leaders of that time period, or from the measurements, it could be con referring to people that used um, scales to, that were corrupt to um, trick people into making them pay more money. Zaru Rishaim Mirechem, the Rishaim have strayed from righteous path already since they were in the womb. Taumi Beten Dovre Chazav, from mother's stomachs, they already were speaking words of trickery and deceit. So if these wicked people are so wicked that even from the womb, even at the, when they were a fetus, they were inclined to do wicked, that there's no straying them from this path because from the time they were born, they were this wicked. Chamat lamo kidmut chamat nachash, their venom is like snake's venom. Kimo patan harashi atam ozno, like a deaf cobra that close up their ears. So from a continuation of talking about dovre chazav, their words of wickedness, now we describe them as snakes that do wicked through their venom. And we're focusing on the mouth as a source of where their wicked is coming, wickedness is coming from. Um, Asher lo yishma lekol hamelachshim, that doesn't listen to the voice of the snake charmers, chover chavarim mechakim, or the most expert in the field of magic, of those people that were involved in magic. So these snakes have made themselves deaf to any snake charmer that would want to control them and tell them what to do. So this mashal of the snake that doesn't listen to the charmers um, is used to describe our Rishaim, that even people that try to steer them to their path of righteousness, there's no steering them to that. They made themselves deaf. They won't listen. Um, so now in, we went, this is the second part of the Mizmor now we're going to start, which goes from describing the Rishayim and the wickedness of these people, and now we're going to talk about um, a plea to God to cause their downfall and to, to save the people. Elohim harashina mo bifimo. God destroy their teeth in their mouth. So again, we're continuing to focus on the mouth as um, where their actions of evil are coming from. Um, and here now we're focusing on the teeth. Um, this also goes back to the mashal of the snake, that um, in that time period, the snake charmers would remove the teeth so that the snakes could not ha cause harm. So because they were these deaf snakes that can't be controlled by the snake charmers, they still had their teeth. So we're asking God to remove their teeth, remove these wicked people's ability to do wicked and cause evil and do damage. Malta'ok firim natat Hashem. God, break out the teeth of young lions. So we went from talking about a snake, and now we're talking about a lion. Again, focusing on the teeth and focusing on these more violent animals. Yimasu kimomayim, let them melt away like water. Yitalechu lamo, destroy them and make them disappear. Yidroch yitzav kimo yitmalalu, when he aims his arrows, let them be as they are cut off. Kimo shivlol temes yahaloch, like a species of snail, they should let them pass away. So the shiblol is this type of snail that lives in a shell, and because it has no bones, if it exits the shell, it becomes wounded and um, 
and dissolve. So we went from describing the wicked people as these strong animals and um, being able to do to cause harm to now this weak, vulnerable snail. And that's what we're asking God to make them, to prevent them from doing harm and stop them in their path. Nafal eshet bal chazum shemesh, make them like the stillborn who never saw the sunlight. Um Yavinus Yorotechem Atad, before the ripening of their throne their thorns become hard and penetrating, Kimochai, Kimocharon, Yesharenu. The raw and the dried out burning will be swept away by stormy winds. So we're emphasizing that the destruction of those wicked people should come before their thorns ripen, before they have the ability to cause more harm and do more damage. And with all this, with um, the destruction of these wicked people, Yismach Tzadik Ki Chazak Nakam. The righteous person will rejoice in this vengeance. Pa'amav Yerchatz Bidam Harasha. He will wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. Um, the righteous people will be around to see the destruction of the wicked people. That um, they're the ones that will prevail and they're the ones that will outlast them. Vayomer Adam Ach Pri Tzadik. Men will say there's fruitfulness that there is a reward to the righteous people. There is a God that judges on earth. So here we see a full circle of the Mizmor that once there's vengeance and once there's destruction of the wicked people, only then will everyone know that it is God that's judging on earth. Unlike in Pasuk Aleph when we saw that it was the wicked people that were judging. Um, so at the end of this Mizmor with this the discussion of the wicked people and how wicked they are, that they were wicked from the time of their birth and there was no way to convince them out of it, um, then once they're destroyed only and the righteous people will prevail, then like God's justice will be prevalent throughout the world. And only then will Kavod Hashem be realized throughout the lands because he has shown that the idea of Scharva Onesh and doing good and getting good back for that. Um, so on this Yom Mut, may we see the destruction of corruption and the prevail of the righteousness, and with this, that Kavod Hashem should be realized throughout the land. Thanks.